Welcome back to this week's sermon message for part two. If you haven't heard the first part of this week's sermon message about Gideon during Sunday worship service, watch the video before continuing on. So Gideon might have felt a little bit better when he gathered his Israelite army together and saw that 32,000 men had come to help him fight. But the Midianite army was still four times bigger than Gideon's army. And now Gideon thought his army might be able to win, especially if God helped them. But, you know, God wanted everyone to know for sure that God was really the one rescuing the Israelites and they weren't rescuing, you know, all on their own by themselves. So God told Gideon that his army was too big. Anyone who was afraid to fight should go home. And at this point, how do you think Gideon felt when 22,000 of his soldiers went home because they were afraid? Probably disappointed, nervous, and scared. Now Gideon's army was left with 10,000 men and nearly four t 14 times smaller than the Midianite army. Then God told Gideon a way to send home even more soldiers. Now he was left with 300 men left in Gideon's army. The Midianite army was over 400 times bigger than Gideon's army at this point. But God promised to use this small army to still save the Israelites. God knew that he could win the battle without any soldiers at all, but how do you think Gideon felt? Maybe he was upset with God, hopeless, feeling defeated. And that night, God told Gideon to sneak down to the Midianite camp. You see, God had a plan all along. God wanted to show him, that, show him that he was already working on Gideon's side. As Gideon came near the enemy camp, he listened carefully to what he, the, some of the soldiers were saying. He heard some of them talking about him. The soldiers were afraid of Gideon because of the promise God had made to give him victory over the Midianites. Gideon finally re realized and believed that God could use him to do the things that he could never do on his own. He snuck back into his own little army and gave them instructions for the battle they were about to fight. He told each of them to bring a trumpet and a jar with a torch hidden inside. Then he gave them these directions. Watch me, follow my lead. When I get to the edge of the camp, do exactly as I do. When I and all who are with me blow our trumpets, then from all around the camp, blow yours and shout, for the Lord and for Gideon. The soldiers followed Gideon's orders and prepared for this strange battle. It was dark and the Midianites were fast asleep. They weren't ready for what came next. The 300 men obeyed Gideon. Suddenly the sound of trumpets blowing and jars smashing broke through the silence of the night. Torches lit up the night sky and it seemed like soldiers were all around them. The enemy soldiers were so scared and they were confused waking up from their sleep that they began to attack each other. They destroyed most of their own army as they all tried to run away. Gideon and his army chased them and the Midianites were totally defeated by God. Gideon had doubted that God could use him, but God still used him and rescued the Israelites. After this, the people started to serve God for a little while and guess what happened? Soon they went their own ways and they began worshiping false gods again and did not give any credit for God or to God for rescuing them from their enemies. If you believed in Jesus as your savior, don't forget all that God has done for you. Remember that he has the power to save you from sin and trust that he has the power to use you. God wants to use you for his good work. Say it with me. God can use me.